Well, yes, indeed. Uh, Samson Nitolo joins us next. He is the executive director of Yaga. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Now, following or owing partly to what transpired in the presidential elections, there seems to be some sort of probably uncertainty about how this Saturday will go. In fact, when I told some persons about the Saturday's election, they were like, oh, is it this Saturday? So, but from your perspective, I mean, you're supposed to have been that mindset of elections coming through this Saturday, and then the cases in court, and all of this that is going on, what, what's going through your mind as to how Saturday is going to play out? Well, first, we pray Saturday holds, because um, like you said, there's uncertainty. It's affected even our planning and preparations for the elections. Well, the court said they would um, issue a ruling um, this afternoon at 2 p.m., so we'll wait. But whatever the case is, um, it's our considered opinion that um, given the situation, perhaps the election should be moved by either one week or two weeks. Reasons being that if the court delivers a ruling today mm -hmm. and it um, adopts INEC's request, um, INEC would have less than three days to configure the BVAS machines. And the big question is, can the commission do, do that within those three days in such a way that the BVAS machines will be fully configured and ready for deployment on Saturday? So whatever is the case, Regardless of how this ruling goes today, we're already in a difficult situation. And so to prevent further logistical issues during the governorship elections, um, to the extent that it will also undermine the integrity of those elections, I think it's just in the best interest to reschedule the election, whatever the court says, um, uh, and, and stakeholders should adopt the ruling um, of the court. But as we... That dicey situation. It's a, it's a dicey uh, situation. Because, I'm one, I, I don't think that when we thought about introducing technology, we ever thought that, you know, having governorship elections so close to it would also affect the use of the same technology, for instance, the Beavers now. Uh, I don't think that we thought about a situation whereby parties will go to court and would need to inspect these materials as part of their evidence. But this is not, this is not the first time this, this is happening. What is just happening is just the consequence and the cost of broken trust. If everything had gone well with the first round of elections, perhaps the parties might, would have approached this differently. And there are two options available to INEC. The first is, yes, if you're going to reconfigure, subject that particular process to public scrutiny. A transparent Invite, be scenario. transparent about the configuration and say, okay, if you synchronize all the data, you have them backed up and the parties can have access to this, because they would, that's, that's a critical evidence that they need to, to um, advance their case in, in, in court. So if, I, if INEC is transparent about that entire process, perhaps it might give the parties and the stakeholders comfort that INEC is not onto something untoward towards the management of that data. And the second bit, is, which is the second option, just move the um, elections by a week or two give the parties that opportunity. But INEC also needs time to configure the BVAS machines. Because mm -hmm. this is Wednesday. You have an election on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And my view is these three days, mm -hmm. it's not sufficient for INEC to configure all those machines in such a way that they will be fully prepared for deployment on Saturday. So whatever <laughs> the case is, we're in a very difficult, we're already in a quad diff mind. difficult wow. situation. And because the other thing about that too is, well, it may, it's looking more like two weeks, because given that this is the presidential elections, and if parties, if the court needs to meet them halfway, because you never know, they may say, look, the time we need to go through certain things, one week may still not cut it. So it, it's really a tricky one. No, you know the Constitution sets a timeline yeah. um, that elections for governorship elections shall hold not earlier than 150 days and not later than 30 days. Mm -hmm. And so if you count 30 days from May 29th, you'll be somewhere around April 28th. So even if the election were moved by two weeks, we're still, still within... within the constitutional time frame. And I think that it, it, would, it would help. It gives INEC also an opportunity to co properly configure the BVAS machines and make them ready, it also gives the parties the opportunity. And I think that if the courts were going to rule, and um, this is not being preemptive, it should also be within a reasonable time frame. You cannot give the parties um, um, so much time that it would affect you know, the constitutional time frame for the conduct of those um, elections. Well, it's no, also a dicey yeah. one for the political mm -hmm. parties. And I know that this is not something that the CSOs would be concerned about, but some parties might want to build momentum. 
on what they might think they have already gained, if they did gain something in, mm -hmm. in the uh, presidential elections. I mean, there were some pleasant surprises, or uh, pleasant and unpleasant, and it depends yeah. on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. But upsets that we saw in, in some area, and, and some people will say, um, you know, there are some political parties that want to build on the strength of that. I mean, some, you know, small parties that we'd not think could yeah. pull their weight, really pull their weight in these elections. So do, don't you think that that could take the wind out of their sail, this postponement of elections? I, I think for me, I look at what's in the overall national interest okay. um, and not partisan interest. And what's in the overall national interest is to consider these issues, that this entire process has to be transparent. And so whatever decision is taken must uphold that principle of transparency to inspire confidence on the stakeholders. And I say this, that we are having this conversation because of the breach of trust and broken trust as a result of the presidential elections. And secondly, it's also INEC's ability to engage with stakeholders. And I wish that, quite frankly, in the last couple of days, the Commission had consulted with stakeholders, political parties, civil society, and media, bring them to the table. Say, hey, this is the issue that we have. We need to configure these beavers machines. This is what we will do. There are two options available. One, we can partition the beavers um, in such a way that the data for the presidential election is still stored on the device. But will the stakeholders be confident that if you partition the beavers, it will not lead Street. to any technological issues yep. in the build-up to the governorship election? That's one. Two, to say, OK, we are going to configure these beavers. These beavers machines are in the states. What is this whole configuration? It's to change the date of the election, the type of the election, and then erase the voter accreditation data. Say, so, OK, parties invite, bring your party agents to the INEC offices in those locations. As they pick each BVAS machine before the reconfiguration, the party agents will have their tally sheets where they take all these records. These are conversations and consultations should have happened, but it's sad that it's been taken to the court, court, and the court yeah. will have to rule on this. But whichever situation we find ourselves, I think it's important that we are mindful that, yes, there's still time based on the Constitution, mm. but there's need to continue to inspire confidence on the yeah. part of the stakeholders as well as Nigerians. And that's why they say your problem is not your problem, but how you handle your problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, INEC needs to ensure that they don't appear as though they're avoiding questions and engaging, because this is a public institution we're talking about here.